This video is part of consumer theory. In it, I'll show you how to graph the income and substitution effects of a price change. To graphically illustrate the income and substitution effects of a price change, consider a consumer who initially maximizes her utility by choosing bundle A. Bundle A is the optimal bundle because it represents a point of tangency between the consumer's original budget line and the highest possible indifference curve. Now suppose the price of the good on the x-axis decreases. A decrease in the price of x will rotate the budget line outward. The consumer's original chosen bundle, bundle A, is no longer optimal. It's still affordable, but it's no longer on the highest possible indifference curve. The consumer will now be able to move to a higher indifference curve by choosing bundle C on IC2. We can see here that this decrease in the price of X makes the consumer better off because he moves to a higher indifference curve. We can also see that in moving from the original bundle A to the new optimal bundle C, the consumer increases his consumption of good X and decreases his consumption of good Y. What this shows is the total effect of this price reduction. The total effect shows what actually happens when the price of a good changes. To better understand how and why a consumer responds in the way that the total effect shows, we're going to graphically decompose this total effect into the substitution and income effects. To do that, we need to add a third budget line to the graph. This budget line is called the compensated budget line and really represents a hypothetical. It allows us when moving from the original budget line to the compensated budget line to simulate what would happen if the price of good X relative to the price of good Y fell, but the consumer's utility stayed the same. And the compensated budget line allows us to look at when we go from the compensated budget line to the new budget line, Hypothetically, what if the consumer's purchasing power increased, but the relative price of X in terms of Y stayed constant? So we need this third budget line called the compensated budget line as a graphical tool to decompose the total effect into the substitution and income effects. There are two things you need to know about the compensated budget line in order to graph it. First, the compensated budget line has to be parallel to budget line two. That's because the compensated budget line has to reflect the price of X relative to the price of Y after the price of X changes. And two, the compensated budget line has to be on, and in fact tangent to, indifference curve one. To draw the compensated budget line, put a straight edge on budget line two and shift it, in this case inward, until it's just tangent to IC1. Label this new point of tangency as bundle B. With bundle B now added to the graph, we can decompose the total effect of the reduction in the price of X. The substitution effect shows the effect on consumption due to a change in the relative price of X in terms of Y, holding utility constant. That's exactly what happens from bundle A to bundle B. First note that since A and B are both on IC1, utility is held constant from A to B. Furthermore, bundle A is a point of tangency to the original budget line with the original relative price of X. Bundle B is a point of tangency to the compensated budget line with the new relative price of X. So from A to B, the relative price of X in terms of Y falls, but utility is held constant. We see here the substitution effect pulling consumption of good X up. The income effect shows what happens to consumption when there's a change in purchasing power holding the relative price of X constant. We see the income effect here when moving from B to C. When the price of X falls, the consumer feels richer 
or has an increase in purchasing power. That's what happens from bundle B to bundle C. In moving from bundle B to bundle C, the budget line shifts out, showing an increase in the affordable set or purchasing power, while the slope of the budget line remains the same. That's why movement from B to C reflects the income effect, which here increases the consumption of good X. Because the increase in purchasing power causes an income effect that increases consumption of X, this shows X to be a normal good. So far, we've only focused on what happens to good X when the price of good X changes. But now let's look at what happens to good Y. The substitution effect from A to B shows the consumer substituting towards good X and away from good Y. The income effect from B to C shows the consumer buying more of good X as well as more of good Y. Because the income effect shows the consumer buying more of good Y when purchasing power goes up, we also now know that good Y is a normal good. Finally, the total effect is a movement from bundle A to C. In this case, the substitution and income effects on X both pull X up, so the total effect unambiguously shows consumption of X increasing. In addition, from A to C, the consumption of Y decreases. This reveals that the substitution effect must be stronger than the income effect on good Y because the substitution effect pulled Y down, whereas the income effect pulled Y up. Since in total Y decreases, the substitution effect must have been dominant. Once again, when X is a normal good, both the substitution and income effects show an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. For that reason, all normal goods follow the law of demand because when the price of X goes down, the quantity demanded necessarily goes up in the total effect. On the other hand, when X is an inferior good, when the price of X decreases, the substitution effect will pull X up because the relative price of X in terms of Y has decreased, while the income effect will pull X down because purchasing power has gone up and consumption of inferior goods thus goes down in the income effect. So here we see that the substitution and income effects pull X in opposite directions, giving us an ambiguous total effect. As shown in this example, the substitution effect outweighs the income effect, leading to a total effect that pulls consumption of good X up. In this way, the law of demand holds. Price of X goes down, and what actually happens is X goes up. Some inferior goods do follow the law of demand, specifically when the substitution effect outweighs the income effect. Other inferior goods break the law of demand when the income effect is stronger than the substitution effect. These goods are called Giffen goods. A Giffen good is an inferior good for which the income effect is stronger than the substitution effect giving us a total effect that breaks the law of demand.